Stuart here from Public Law Hacks, where we bring you simple guides to public law issues. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Today we're going to look at the first in a series of key cases in constitutional law. And this hack comes from my collaborator, the wonderful Dr. Haley Hooper at the University of Oxford. Now, the decision of the House of Lords in Jackson versus the Attorney General from 2005 is one of the most important judgments in UK constitutional law because it tells us something about the relationship between the principle of parliamentary sovereignty and the common law powers of the courts. Now, before we start out, we should remind ourselves about the generally accepted principle of parliamentary sovereignty. Now, Professor Dicey wrote that parliamentary sovereignty meant that one, Parliament could make or unmake any law whatsoever, and two, no person or body could override or set aside an act of Parliament, including the courts. Now, these rules are sometimes called legislative supremacy, but textbooks also use parliamentary sovereignty, parliamentary supremacy, and legislative supremacy to mean the same things, so watch out for that. Now, these rules grant legally unlimited power to Parliament. Under Dicey's idea of sovereignty of Parliament, the Parliament could legislate to provide for the killing of all red-haired people, and this would have to be enforced by the courts. Now, back to Jackson. Jackson challenged the validity of the Hunting Act of 2004, claiming it was not a real act of Parliament, because it was made under the Parliament Acts of 1911 and 1949. Now, the Parliament Acts allow for legislation to be passed without the consent of the second chamber of the UK Parliament, the House of Lords. Now, the Parliament Acts remove the ability of the House of Lords to reject legislation that was approved by the House of Commons. And under these Acts, the House of Lords could only delay legislation. It couldn't block it entirely. Now, Jackson lost his case, but the judges ruled that the legislation made under the Parliament Acts is still valid legislation. However, this is not what makes the case interesting. The judge's discussion soon turned to whether there were any limits to what laws passed by Parliament could say. While all the judges agreed the Parliament Acts provided a procedure to create valid primary legislation, there was a sharp disagreement among the judges about whether the Parliament Acts could be used to pass legislation with content of any kind. The majority of the judges stressed the importance of parliamentary sovereignty and the freedom of Parliament to legislate on whatever it wanted to. Lord Bingham described parliamentary sovereignty as the bedrock of the Constitution, one of the most important principles in UK constitutional law. But a minority of three judges, Lord Hope, Lord Stein and Lady Hale expressed a different view, which questioned the status of parliamentary sovereignty as a fundamental principle. While their views were not part of the binding judgment, they were important, and the full quotes will now appear on the screen. You can see Lord Stein said that the principle of parliamentary sovereignty can now be seen to be out of place in the modern United Kingdom. He also questioned whether the Parliament could pass legislation that got rid of the ability of UK courts to carry out judicial review, because this is another constitutional fundamental and the Parliament might not be able to remove it. Lord Hope said it was not right to say that Parliament's freedom to legislate was unlimited. Parliamentary sovereignty would be an empty principle if legislation is passed, which is so absurd or so unacceptable that the population at large refuses to recognise it as law. While Lady Hale said that the courts might reject an attempt to weaken the rule of law by stopping courts from reviewing government actions that affected the rights of individuals. Now what does this mean for the principle of parliamentary sovereignty? Well remember Dicey's view, which is the most accepted view, places no limits on the content of legislation. But in Jackson, three of the most senior judges in the country said that the courts could use their powers under common law to limit what Parliament's legislation could say. 
these judges challenged key parts of parliamentary sovereignty. They questioned whether parliamentary sovereignty really is the central principle of the UK constitution. They said that the courts may not allow legislation which is unacceptable to the majority of the people to stand as law. And they said that the courts may not allow legislation which restricts judicial review of government actions or infringes the rule of law. The key takeaway is this. Acts of Parliament are still supreme over common law, but Jackson shows us that some judges are willing to question this supremacy in extraordinary circumstances. It's really important to stress that only a minority of the nine judges held these views in the Jackson case. But other judges have made similar comments in cases since then, and we will cover this in another video. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe to the video, it really helps us. And if you would like to ask a question or request a video on another topic or case, please leave a comment below. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.